In this video, we are going to look at the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide. And then from the dot structure, we're going to try to draw the hybrid orbital picture of carbon dioxide and show the sigma and pi bonding. So if we do a quick electron count, carbon has four valence electrons and each oxygen in column six has six electrons, so that gives us a total of 16 electrons. And since hydrogen is not here, everything obeys the octet, so we can divide by eight, and we get two bonds, and more importantly, a remainder of zero. And so a multiple of eight, as long as hydrogen is not in the molecule, means that the lone there will not be lone pairs on the central atom. So if I draw CO2 and align to each oxygen, when we do the divide by eight method, the two bonds is not the same as two lines. So we have to know that carbon still needs eight electrons around it. So we would put a double bond to each oxygen. And again, the quick divide by eight method works great because all we care about is the central atom for hybrid orbital theory. And so we could put the lone pairs on the outer oxygens, but the focus of this theory is on the central atom. So we can see that there are two electron domains. So two EDs means we have a linear electron domain geometry. EDG, and electrons are going to repel and maximize the angle between them. So this would be 180 degrees between electron groups. And the hybrid orbitals from the atomic orbitals, I'm going to write out that there's always one S orbital, and then there's always three P atomic orbitals. It's not focused there very well. And it's um, a little better. So since we have two electron domains, we're going to use two atomic orbitals. So we're going to have two sp hybrid orbitals around the carbon. And then we'll have two unhybridized p orbitals switch the lights here. So we have two sp hybrid orbitals on carbon and then the two unhybridized p orbitals. These are going to account for the double bond. So I'm going to try to draw those in red and then when I do the drawing, the three-dimensional drawing, I'll put those orbitals in red as well. So these are unhybridized p atomic orbitals. And that's what accounts for the double bond. So if I draw carbon in the middle, and then I show this is an sp hybrid orbital and another sp hybrid orbital. So we could label those. There's two of them. And if I show my oxygen out here, and again, I'm just going to put a normal p orbital around the outer atoms. Some textbooks hybridize all the atoms and then put the lone pairs in them. But just to simplify things, I'm going to focus on the central atom only. So that is our oxygen atom. And I'm showing sigma overlap here. So we've got to have overlap in between the two atoms. So here's our oxygen. So that's also a sigma bond. And then the p orbitals, if I draw one of those, uh, I'm going to exaggerate. I'll draw that one. This, for example, might be the p in the y direction on the carbon. That could overlap in the pi fashion with the p orbital on this outer 
oxygen atom. And I'm just going to shade that in because I've drawn the hybrid orbital so large. So this double bond has the pi bonding, which is the sideways overlap of two atomic orbitals. And so whenever we have overlap above and below or in front or back of the inter nuclear axis, then that's the pi bond. So that's one of the unhybridized p orbitals. If I did the other one in a different color, I'll just use a black marker. So if I have this p orbital as black, I'm going to try to draw that one. We have to imagine this one coming out of the page and going back behind the paper. So this would be the p orbital in the z direction, which would come directly out of the paper and behind the paper at 90 degrees. So that p orbital, I'm going to call that the p in the z direction. So I'm assuming that our axes, this is x along the horizontal, this is y up and down, and the z axis would be coming straight out of the paper toward us. So that unhybridized p orbital could overlap with this oxygen over here. This is just another p orbital on oxygen. So this carbon has two pi bonds to it. So I'm going to try to draw that overlap. I should have gone behind that p orbital. So recall that one pi bond is always going to have two regions of overlap. So we don't want to label each line connecting those as a pi bond. We just want to label one of those shaded regions pi. If we go back to our CO2 molecule, just draw that right here. So the one line that we have connecting atoms is the sigma bonding. So if I call that the sigma bond, then this additional line would be this pi bond going over to this oxygen. And then another sigma bond connecting carbon to the second oxygen. Could put that here. And then the pi bond, the additional line here. So that is a mess. I'm sure that textbooks have a much better picture of this. They can draw that and show in the shading, which makes it look more three-dimensional. Uh, but anytime we have multiple bonding, there is going to be this P, P overlap, and we call that pi bonding. We could also have a triple bond, for example, carbon triple bonded to oxygen. In this case, there are no central atoms, or we could say they were both central atoms. So each one of these atoms would have a lone pair, meaning each atom would have two electron domains around it. So if we look at the carbon, we can say that carbon is going to have two sp hybrid orbitals. So the other sp hybrid orbital would house those, the lone pair. And then we could do the same thing for this oxygen. And it would also be sp hybridized because it's got two groups of electrons around it. So its lone pair would go in to this sp hybrid orbital. And again, I always draw out all of the atomic orbitals. And the number of electron domains is the hybridization. This also has two unhybridized p atomic orbitals. So if I try to make one in red, I could do that here. I could put the unhybridized p atomic orbital on the oxygen, and then the unhybridized p atomic orbital on the carbon, and then that overlap, which occurs above and below the axis joining the two molecules would be the second line. So here's our sigma bonding. So we've got to have overlap in between the two atoms. So the 
one line connecting those atoms is always going to be sigma. So the second line, we could call that pi, and then we have a triple bond. So that triple bond would also be considered a pi bond. And again, I need to try to draw this so that the p orbital that did not get involved in hybridization, that p orbital is we got to try to project it so that it's coming 90 degrees outside the out of the paper. So if I just draw it like that and a dotted line showing the second lobe going behind the paper. And same thing with oxygen. So again, this might be the P in the Z direction at 90 degrees to the paper. So we would have overlap in front and behind the axis joining that molecule. So again, this is a mess with me trying to draw that, but any additional lines connecting any two atoms will always be pi bonds. And we certainly don't have a choice on where to put the multiple bonds here. So we would say that these are localized pi bonds and localized because there's no resonance. Okay, and as soon as we have sp3 hybridization, we've done an example of sp2 on the previous video, an example of sp hybridization would constitute two pi bonds because of the two unhybridized p orbitals in both cases, here and here. As soon as we have four electron domains, for example, CH4, or even H2O with lone pairs. As soon as we have four electron domains, we'll just draw methane really quickly. Since there's four electron domains, that means we're going to use four atomic orbitals and rename four hybrid orbitals. So S and three P's, recall from uh, quantum theory, there's always one orbital in the S subshell and there's always three orbitals in the P subshell. And if we've got four electron domains, we're going to hybridize all four available atomic orbitals so we would have four sp3 hybrid orbitals on carbon. And the point that I'm wanting to make here is there are no leftover p atomic orbitals. So there's no double bonding or triple bonding, no double or triple bonding or sp3, so that's four electron domains, or five electron domains, an expanded octet would require one of the d orbitals to be involved in hybridization, and then six electron domains would require two of the d orbitals. So this is four electron domains, this is five electron domains, and six electron domains. So we are not going to see double or triple bonds on any atom that's sp3 hybridized or higher. So if we look at our available atomic orbitals, sp, p, and p, the sp2 would allow for one pi bond and an sp hybridization. So this would be the trigonal planar. So when we see sp2, especially if we go on to organic chemistry, 
you, you might see that carbon is sp2 hybridized. You're going to automatically know that that is the environment that carbon's in. So sp2 hybridized automatically means there's a pi bond. Sigma, sigma, sigma. Or if you see sp, that's two electron domains. So sp hybridization is linear. So that's the 180 degree angles. Trigonal planar again is the 120s. So if we see that carbon is sp hybridized, we're going to know that carbon is in that environment. And sigma bonds, we've got to have one line connecting atoms, and each additional line would be a pi bond.